episode 14. What's going on, Internet? I'm Christopher Peterson, and you're listening to the Nerd EXP Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of hanging out with a level 4 Drew. Hello. A level 5 Ska Bebop Master. Hello. That's Edgar. And a guy with a power level over 9,000. Representing. That's Guillermo. And we're here to help you level up your nerd IQ. How do we do that? By going through this week's top entertainment headlines in TV, movies, comics, games, doing an in-depth discussion for our topic of the week, and answering your listener questions. Such as Andy. Andy sent us an email, just kind of following up after our Guardians of the Galaxy discussion about movie actors and why they sometimes take TV roles to kind of prove their acting chops. And uh, it, it was an interesting article. Uh, the kind of the format of it was saying that it's all Waterworld's fault. That Waterworld came out, was a huge flop in America, but then went internationally. And because of translations, people didn't really care. They just saw the spectacle. So a weak script is okay for a movie to still bring home millions upon millions of dollars. And kind of a, a theme that we've seen this year is a weak domestic box office that is continually saved by the international markets. Fair enough. So thank you, Andy, for sharing that. If you guys want to share anything or ask us a question, we will gladly answer it. You can email us at nerdexp at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or in line if you're Guillermo. That's right. Moving on to this week's TV news, uh, NBC released the pilot episode of From A to Z. This show will air in October. Uh, it hit Hulu and NBC. Uh, my personal experience, I was flipping through Hulu and I go, what the hell is this? What is the chick from How I Met Your Mother doing on another show? When did it come out? Man, they freaking self-released this. Did some research, discovered what I just told you guys that it hasn't actually aired yet. Um, a couple of us have watched it. Uh, you know, Guillermo, I think you were the most positive, so yeah. you know, we always want to leave with a good positive note. That's so right. we can just, just tear it down later. <laughs> what do you think of it? So, something I felt about, you know, I, I watch How I Met Your Mother every episode. I love that show. I love the ending. It was very well done. One thing that I did hold it against it is Christian Miliotti, who plays the mother... Um, I felt like that was such a likable character. She's such a likable actress that I wanted to see more of her and acting the way she was acting in How I Met Your Mother. So that, based on that, that's how I got from A to Z. Uh, I feel that she <laughs> kind of picks up that same kind of same character, you know, kind of kind of uh, dialogue. It's similar to How I Met Your Mother. It's it's uh, somewhat nerdy, but then somewhat simple uh, dialogue. Um, so to me it was very cool I, I think it's a cool premise yeah it's a little too close to playing on How I Met Your Mother and maybe that's why I liked it it was kind of comfortable but that's I got hooked I mean this is an episode that you know comes October whatever it's gonna air and they're gonna air the same pilot I think I'm you know it, it, I'm excited to see more episodes of it um Looked into Christian Miliotti. I didn't know this about her. She's like a Grammy winner already. She was in uh, the Broadway musical of Once, uh, which oh, also, nice. was also a hit. She was the the, the uh, singer, so the she's also a chick? talented singer. Yeah, wow. So she's also a talented singer, and she was in The Wolf of Wall Street. As the was she in The Wolf of Wall Street? She was the first wife of uh, Leo DiCaprio. Oh. Not Leonardo the Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Not Johnny Knoxville. Not Johnny, Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> so, Edgar, you just saw the trailer. Yes. What do you think of it from the trailer? I'm not going to watch it. Uh, Did you watch How I Met Your Mother? Yeah, I watched How I Met Your Mother. I stopped watching, like, at the ducky tie. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good place to watch. Uh, <laughs> uh, I watched the trailer. I've been there, done that. It's nice to see, like, the Mad Men guy. His name's Ginsburg and Mad Men. I don't know his real name. Uh, I don't know. Was he the fat friend? Like, with uh, a beard? No, he's the main guy. Oh, the young, like, skinny guy? Okay. Yes. Uh, so, I'll probably just stay on the sidelines on this one. And then get caught up whenever it's a hit. I mean, Guillermo did talk about Brooklyn Nine-Nine for a long time, and I'm like, Pfft. But it's the best show. <laughs> Bro- Brooklyn was right about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yeah. 
Uh, Guillermo. Guillermo. I know. I <laughs> screw that sentence. I go by <laughs> <laughs> My street, street name, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll sit on the sidelines. I'll see how it goes. But uh, Brooklyn was wrong about this first episode. Uh, I, I do agree with him as far as like Chris uh, Steam Milwaukee and the main guy from Mad Men whose name none of us can remember. They, they do have good chemistry and they do have good interaction. Yeah. So I will say if they can spin that out and the fact that they showed this pilot now they can yeah. change episode 2 and forward they have a chance to it's almost like a beta for like a game like we're we're giving you this months before the actual show and actual stuff releases to see what the audience reaction is this might be like a good test in television like I've never seen anything like this right. I'm aware so of are we saying you know maybe I mean this is how they're going to get their test audience they know how the pilot's going to do uh, there's crazy buzz about this series um, they were talking on the radio stations how you know they had the Christian Milioti on a on a guest show the other day so there's def- there's definitely buzz it's interesting maybe this is the way to you know not every single you know pilots there's so many pilots of TV shows that potentially sure. could sound or potentially sound really good um, you know for example Wonder Woman there was a whole pilot shot edited and everything it was presented in a test audience it never made it out on the air. Maybe this is the platform to really just reach out masses and test stuff out at a very cheap price. Yeah. So they're hosting it on their own website. People are finding it on their own. They're hitting play on their own. They don't have to really do anything other than just put it on a website. So that, 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 that's an interesting concept. I'm going to go into spoilers for A to Z, the unaired show that you can watch on Hulu. That's going to come out in October. So if you didn't watch it. I'm just kidding. Too bad. <laughs> You're gonna deal with it. I mean, I did not watch it, but I'm just kidding that I care. Oh, I mean, like, I like some of the interaction between the two characters, uh, Andrew and Zelda, um, but like everything else felt really generic. Um, the best friend felt like a Barney imitation of you know lying to women and being all over the place, and just felt like a caricature. The whole job setting of him working for an eHarmony and her being a lawyer. It's like, oh, he believes in love and she believes in logic. Like, it just, and the omnipresent, uh, omnipresent narrator of um, Al Bundy's wife, it just felt like it was very yes. much like, um, what's her name? Kathy Siegel? I think so. Yeah. Along, um, it, just, it just felt really generic. Like I said, like these two characters have good chemistry, they also have some bad chemistry. Like, not every line of dialogue and that they're together hits. Um, but there's enough positives that I think that this show could turn into something great. But like, if this first pilot episode is indicative of what the entire season is going to be, no interest. It is not a show. This show is not worth watching 26 times. But I really loved Community, and Community did not start off freaking fantastic and great either. So shows do take a while to get their footing and figure out where they're going. So I mean, maybe Parks I should and Rec be... was that way. I think as well. Agree. The first season is. Not at all like the rest of the so, show. So I'm interested to see, and I'll have a look into it, is what plays on Thursdays. Because this is going to be a Thursday, 9.30 at night show. On oh, ABC. Wow. It, on late. ABC, but it's already a risky time slot. It's not like they're going for the 8 o'clock. They're going for the last prime time spot, 9.30. I, I don't know if 10 o'clock is prime. It's not prime anymore. Time, but, at least not comedies. Right, so I hope they got, uh, you know, the powerhouse NBC comedies this Thursday. I, I hope they don't pair it with, like, CSI New York Parks and, and CIS or something that's not even on NBC. Parks and Rec is their traditional nine o'clock, so and I think that's their longest running series. That is it a Thursday? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, so, so, like, be so, they, so they have a good anchor. Rashida but. Jones is the producer on this uh, show on From A to Z. That means uh, she gave it money. <laughs> well, that's it. She actually is producing it, and then from what I was reading, is she was part of the development and selling it to NBC. And apparently, you know, a lot of people, she screen tested it for a lot of people within that NBC circle of friends that she, you know, the SNL people. And then that's how it got uh, picked up. I'm surprised it didn't have Lauren Michaels' his name. Show <laughs> that's it. cool. Oh, uh, spoilers. I think the reason that Cameron loves this as much as he did. Christian Mayer Stunt casting. Back to the Future references. Oh, Leah Thompson. Come on. Like, come like, on. It, 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 it is hitting his nostalgia beats. I said spoiler warnings. Oh, gosh. It was on the docket. These guys had a chance to, to watch it. <laughs> yes. Oh, so that's a reason you must watch it. Drew, like, not only is the main character's name Zelda, but uh, Back to the Future references. <laughs> Done. I mean, that, that, that did it for me. I really, that's what I said. You know, it's kind of nerdy and smart and quick. 
it, but it, it doesn't like for me and maybe I'm being too critical um, to me those references weren't clever they were just hitting you over the head it yeah. was just like hey do you like Social Network the movie we're gonna mention it oh the Social Network is mentioned <laughs> <laughs> well, well I mean I'll watch it <laughs> I watch it. One, one thing you know, mentioned NBC had another show that they kind of tested a similar approach. It was that uh, uh, Matthew Perry show. Was it Matthew Perry? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, Go On. I think was the name of the show. I'm not familiar. Um, it was a comedy. They premiered it like with the Super Bowl, right up to the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. and there was that huge gap. I mean, the pilot I thought it was really, really, really good. Hmm. It was about him. You know, his his wife had passed, and he's just. He's a sports uh, Mr. Announcer. Sunshine? Mr. Happy? Yes, maybe. He's a sports guy. Uh, sports announcer. You know, he has a radio show. Friends. It's... <laughs> no, not, not that. Wait, that's Jason Alexander. No. Yes. No. <laughs> no, this is a different show. The TV that's... show's called Shut Up. No, the show's called Go On. But oh, it's they, a reboot of Shut Up. Yeah, they, they tested that same idea of premiering the pilot like way way ahead of time of the actual September this was a September show that started and they premiered it at the Super Bowl yes right after that the Super is Bowl. a crap so, of time that's yeah. crazy you know considering there's so much <laughs> going on but it, it took a while so this this kind of reminded me of that uh, the fact that they're spacing it out so so crazy about it I'm hooked uh, I, I can't wait to see more of it I'll give it a second shot like I'll see what that second episode is before I completely write it off I think that that's really too it sounds a lot best. like the movie No Strings Attached, which I mm. hate. So is that a rom com where they're friends and they have casual? Yeah, that, no, no, it's, 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 it's not. That's that. Natalie Portman. Yeah, oh, that's Natalie not this. Portman. I mean, this is this is <laughs> no, a clear trajectory. Right. It's not like Justin Timberlake. Yeah. No, that's Friends with Benefits. Oh, which is the same story. But <laughs> Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Ashton in Kutcher. Movie. Yeah. Justin Timberlake and Ashton Kutcher hook up, but they don't. <laughs> Want to? <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> then there was that other movie with Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis was in Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake. Oh, oh, but they Black were Swan. together in Black Swan. So what? I love how we're playing past the pop. <laughs> 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 Captain Bacon. <laughs> 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 um, moving on, moving on to this week's comics news. Uh, following kind of like the success of Guardians of the Galaxy, the movie, uh, MTV is doing interviews with Guardians of the Galaxy. The writer Brian Michael Bendis. And he's announcing that he's going to do a Venom Discovery piece where we see the planet of the symbionts. So Spider-Man's uh, costume was first introduced into Secret War. He saw a machine after his costume is ripped. And like any well thought out hero, he goes, hey, this costume, this machine will just build me a new costume. <laughs> but it turned out to be a, a live parasite that fed off of him. And then ended up uh, being attached to um, Eddie Brock, who became Venom. And at this current juncture, Flash Thompson, uh, the jock, yeah. now wears the Venom suit. What? And is hanging out with the Guardians. It's comics. Oh. <laughs> Crazy stuff happens last night. Is now hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And they're going to go to the planet of the symbiotes. Which, to me, the most surprising thing out of this whole story is one that, or I guess two things. One, it's getting national attention. The fact that like MTV and people care, but I guess that just shows the power of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And yeah. two, the fact that the symbiote was actually introduced so long ago, and we've seen this the symbiote spawn Carnage, and Carnage spawn its own things, and we've seen Planet of the Symbiotes and Wolverine Venom, and like any crazy thing, that this hasn't happened yet. But like it, it actually has not happened yet where the symbiote like home world has been discovered. So I guess we still have little things to mine now. It's interesting. I think that's a cool idea. Uh, off of it, I mean, it's crazy not to see more content of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, the other day, I went to Barnes and Noble. Is it? And I, before the movie came out, you know, I was contemplating whether I should buy the Marvels of the Universe. There was one collection. You uh, should wait from the stories. omnibus. <laughs> Maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you think it. Um, so, and I, you know, before the movie came out, I just went back over the weekend. Sold out. Like, <gasps> there's nothing Guardians of the Galaxy. Wow. Uh, there's a spot that says actually Guardians of the Galaxy, but it's all gone. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool that the popularity is there. Yeah. Oh, a very obscure character that, or set of characters that the majority of people thought, what the that's heck crazy. are they thinking? So. And I mean, this story was so huge that, uh, you know, our friend Brad sent it in. Yeah. He's um, a big Spider Man guy. So, I mean, if you guys have any stories that you want to send in, you can definitely reach us. 
reach out to us and you know we'll, we'll bring it up for discussion. So thank you, Brad. I'm curious to find out like if the symbiotes are attached to like the planet's like indigenous people. Because, I mean, they're symbiotes. They need something to live, right? I mean, they're not just blobs. Like, blobs can't build buildings, right? You know? Maybe. Like, the symbiote... Well, blobs don't need buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Um, I know from the animated Spider-Man cartoon series, like, it comes from a rock or whatever, right? Like From a or, uh, space rock. Yeah, it's space, space, yeah. yeah. It and it's like something. a little, like, ink thing. Yep, so it would be cool to see fun. where it comes from. If it was maybe created by someone... Oh. In the lab, are we are we spoiling the Prometheus <laughs> to this? Oh, gross! They're gonna go see the the, the engineer's planet. <clears throat> Moving on to this week's game news. <laughs> Sorry, uh, kind of a modification from last week. Uh, at coming at Gamescom, Tomb Raider said Xbox said the Tomb Raider is exclusive. Uh, I think their exact verbiage was coming exclusively comma this holiday season to the xbox one and that even though typically the uh verbiage in games has been coming first coming exclusively to consoles you know play it exclusively first here Mm -hmm. um it's it's kind of been the the nomenclature that's been used but this this time it kind of adjusted that slightly even in their own gamescom not not announcements they said first to consoles but here they changed it so it turns out microsoft does not own rise of the tomb raider it will be on pc it can potentially be on PS4 and PS3. No dates are announced yet, um, but this is just a timed exclusive. Interesting. Uh, why would Microsoft just get caught in something like that? Because right now, they created a lot of buzz because that's the only thing that was newsworthy. It wasn't the fact that there was a new Tomb Raider. It was the fact that Microsoft got themselves an exclusive of a popular franchise. Uh, so... That really was what what the uh, the uh, buzz is. Why would Microsoft get themselves caught in that? That that's what didn't sit well with me. Uh, Microsoft does this often with map packs. Like uh, when I played Call of Duty, whatever it was on the Xbox, I got exclusive maps before the PlayStation people did. Okay, it was like three weeks or something in advance. So they do this often. I mean, to to be like, hey, you are an Xbox person. Good for you. Here's some maps. Several months before it goes to Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> Years. Wii U doesn't support away. Call of Duty Ghosts. Two consoles away. So, who knows why they get into this? I mean, we talked about it. We yeah. talked about it twice now. We're not yeah. you know, the only people talking about it. Somebody did during more buzz. To be honest, I don't know if I would have put it on the docket if it was just like, hey, just for money, guys, it's coming out. Because the game was already announced at E3. Right, so. yeah, that's exactly what we talked about, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not... I don't know. I, I think Microsoft lied. I think that they spun the message. I think, so, I, think, I think that, you know, they could say, that, oh, we didn't lie. We lowered our speeds and, like, you know, technicalities. <laughs> but they lied. They lied. Um, and I think that's bad publicity, but it's still publicity. It gets their name associated more with Team Raider. And at the end of the day, that's all they care about is, you know, to, to hammer that message home. Um, you know, if you, if you were to buy Watch Dogs, if you're not, like, super informed, you would have thought that was a PS4 exclusive. Same thing with Destiny. Same thing, like Guillermo said, with... Um, Call of Duty and Xbox One. These games and these companies do attach themselves to certain consoles at some points. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess it just becomes like a larger consumer question. Do they have a right? Do they have an obligation to be honest thoroughly with that message? I would hope so. I would hope so. I mean, in this time and day, you really have your alliances, I guess, of fans that preferred the Xbox over the PlayStation. So I kind of feel, you know. If I was anybody who cared about, you know, Xbox, I would feel cheated out of it, like misled. So. Sure. It was kind of silly to me. Like, who would go buy a game just because it's only on the Xbox? Mario Kart. Well, like, well, goes into uh, I don't know if you even have it on the docket, but something we were talking about earlier is how Mario Kart drove the sales for Nintendo for this last quarter. Drove time. sales. Pun huh? <laughs> <laughs> intended. On. That's right. It steered them um, in the right direction. It steered them in the right direction. <laughs> it accelerated, right? <laughs> accelerated. We're break through that uh, conversation. <laughs> um, so, so it drove the sales of Wii U consoles more than any other game has done yet for this game. It's popular. It's still selling. Been out almost two years. 
the, the console, not the, the yeah, Mario Kart. Right. Yeah. So, pretty pretty good thing uh, for them to do. So, it's it's flash in the pan. It's not necessarily a sign that things are going to change for the Wii U. I think it's just one really great game announcement that they had that came out. Uh, Drew, you mentioned that um, you can't imagine how people would just buy games, game systems for games. But when Halo came out, like Halo was like I'm the not, killer app for that's not what I meant. I meant Xbox. Like buying a game because it's on a console, not buying a console because of the game. No, oh. I'm, I'm well aware of console sellers. So I bought a PlayStation Two for Final Fantasy X. Nice. So, so Guillermo ended up being a, our local Nostradamus that's right. and. Told Nintendo, gave them some good advice, and they decided to follow him up on it. That's right. So this this well, I guess it was this morning, big announcement uh, coming from Nintendo, a confirmation that they're finally uh, crossing over to the OS platforms, and they're going to publish the first Nintendo licensed game onto the um, Apple iPads products OS, Apple OS. Uh, it's going to be a Pokemon trading card game. Similar to, uh, I guess, the regular card game, which is a simulation of the of the overall uh, card game that we, you know we all played as young. So this is, I guess, the testing of the waters for Nintendo to see what kind of interest they're really gonna draw. So it's a pretty interesting uh, concept. What do you guys think? Is it gonna be popular? What are you, what are you thinking? I'm really happy to see this. Uh, I loved Pokemon Trading Card Game. Yeah, it was up. great on the Game Boy. It was great. Yeah, uh, I remember playing that Game a Boy. Trading Card Game yeah, on the Game Boy. Awesome. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I like I remember, my mom would take us to Books a Million, mm-hmm. and we would purchase packs, and then we would like trade and fight people like in the Books a Millions like aisles. So that was really nice. I, I I would play this. Like I would download and play it. I would get, I would get packs every week um, when I would go visit my dad. He lived right behind a Toys R Us, and I would go in and get a new pack. And just about every time, there would be like one of the holographic cards. Holographics, that's, that's right. right. And I well, would just, I would take it to school and sell it. And some, <laughs> some kids would pay like up to eighty-five dollars. Eighty-five dollars. Yeah, like you also sell Charizard. Charizard. Char- 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 you sold your Charizard. Char- Char- yeah, so I, just, I never played a, a, an entire game. I don't. Um, I did play a Magic: The Gathering computer game once. Okay. And. Like, I can see how card games can be played, like, digitally, and, yeah. and I would be interested. Although I'd rather play Magic the Gathering on my iPad than Pokemon. What they didn't announce was the price point. Yeah. Which I, is pretty crazy to me. I play Hearthstone daily, and you can earn in-game gold, or you can buy packs of cards. And people buy packs of cards with real money all the time. I just, so, just kid me. This is why they're marketing it. So, I mean, I think Hearthstone, Hearthstone's a huge success. I think that's why we're seeing the Pokemon trading card game. Because it works great on iPad. You know, you play for 10 minutes against somebody else. You get that competitive. You get those packs. You get random. I mean, the microtransactions are huge on this. If if you get somebody who, who's like, I'm going to keep buying packs till I open up a Charizard pack. They could spend $50. They could also right? spend $1 if they happen to get in the first pack. Do you think Nintendo's going to package that? They've never done yeah. that before. Oh, I I How's fully it? believe this will be a microtransaction game. It's, I think it'll be free to play, or you can pay money for packs. I think they'll follow the Hearthstone model. Wow, yeah. that, that that changes my mind on this. Wow, but I guess Nintendo needs some money, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keeping with Nintendo, um, you know, following the uh, passing of Robin Williams, um, a lot of fans requested that he be inserted into a Zelda they game. They started a petition. And I mean, you know, petitions. There was a petition that Justin Bieber should be deported from the country. That's right. So he got, a, he got an answer from so, the White House. So petitions matter. And they make a difference. <laughs> and they made such a difference that Nintendo said, no comments. <laughs> uh, they said it much fancier than that. Though, Basically, know. they said it's too soon. I, I to think that's think what they're taking. Yeah. yeah. They just say they don't, it doesn't fit within their current projects, uh, which. I, I think that's respectful. I think it would be weird for them to announce something just so soon. Robin Williams is already in Ocarina of Time, though. As what? He was Malin of no Long Lawn Ranch. I'm just joking. Oh, because uh, he was he was Harry. He was really Harry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> True. We can't tell when you're serious or not. <laughs> Sorry. I think that Nintendo should stay the course, be respectful, send their wishes, 
and not include Robin Williams in the game. I mean, yeah, what are their I choices? Agree. What are their choices at this point? I, I could see them butcher some audio, putting from, someone that looks like him but not directly. Yeah, putting on a lodge, you know? maybe a character like somebody that has a, you know that kind of, yeah, but not advertising. You know. Oddly enough, say. though, uh, Blizzard got a similar petition, and they did decide to add uh, Robin Williams as a playable character in the world. Is it playable or? I don't. I heard about the petition. Yeah, no, they actually, they, they said, yeah, they were going to add it. I, mean, I can't imagine it's playable. It has yeah, to I wouldn't be, imagine it. It has to be an NPC. An NPC that you can't kill. It's probably some guy in a village. Okay. Yeah, I can't imagine that. It's like, everyone go visit Robin Williams. Yeah. Maybe that could be the quest. <laughs> well, we'll have to ask Alan. It's kind of weird. <laughs> we'll have to ask Alan, our World of Warcraft you know, expert. <laughs> yes, my younger brother Alan. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the WoW expert. See what he says. I didn't know he played WoW. Oh, man. It's crazy. It's, he has a special mouse. For it <laughs> with all the buttons and that that mouse is done already like he has to get another mouse <laughs> uh, Microsoft announced that they are doing a, an Xbox One update and we are not going to go through every Xbox One PS4 Wii U update that comes along this one just caught our eye um, and Guillermo, why does so it kind of jump it out? It brings the uh, security patch 3.343. Whoa, so much better. Whoa, whoa. Wait, you just went down. <laughs> <laughs> <You went up. laughs> Alright, so, no, all kidding aside. So, this is the Xbox One update. They're advertising again, Microsoft making noise for something that's, I guess, not that big of a deal. It's a patch update to their system. Uh, big rollout for it. It's going to include two main features that caught my eye. One is support for 3D Blu-rays, which to this day and age, to me, it was hard to believe that you produced a Blu-ray player and not have the capability to play 3D out of it. So that was one. And the other one was uh, something that you can remotely purchase games or purchase games from a mobile device and directly have the Xbox downloaded. So by the time you get home, that game is downloaded and ready for you to play it. Uh, both of those, and, and this I guess why another reason that I caught my attention, both of those features that were already included out of the box from the PlayStation uh, console. So it just kind of proves our point, or supports our point uh, that, that we made the last a couple of weeks that you know the, the the superior or the winning console so far in sales and everything was yeah. the PS4 as far as adoption and whatnot. So I never agreed to that. <laughs> That's right. Pardon. We, we no, couldn't no, get. No, we no. couldn't pin through down. No. <laughs> I mean, the PS4, in my opinion, is a superior console, and that's where I would go with. Unless you know you you really want to play Sunset Overdrive or Tomb Raider early, or you're Halo that the Xbox One is still a good console. But I mean, I don't know. Like, I think this is an arms race, and you know, PS4 had better Twitch and social streaming. The Xbox One had a patch, and then Sony had to play catch up to that. Yeah. I think that we are going to see this arms race. And you're right, though. I mean, we are looking at. 10 months later and you know they just now are installing some features that PS4 had at launch but uh, you know I think the same thing could be said in reverse um, and I think that we are going to see software changes I would I'd be surprised if these consoles don't look and feel and have a lot more capabilities two years after the release um, than they do when they first came out they will be the consoles that they said they were going to be two years from now yeah. they'll finally have everything that they hoped and promised and PlayStation now and Xbox streaming and all that, so. Fair enough. Um, Nintendo will come out with their next console. And, yeah. and Drew will buy it. <laughs> and only Drew. They will finally support DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the Wii U doesn't support DVDs? I'm sure you could hack it. <laughs> hack it to do so. <laughs> no, we oh not support DVDs. So That's right. <laughs> If you guys are, are true Nintendo fans, uh, this is on the docket, so th- sorry to throw a curveball at you. GameStop is selling the $20 refurbished GameCube. $20 yeah. GameCube. I don't know where they got these GameCubes. Like, you see this online? Yeah. It's like a nationwide thing? Yeah, like the purple handle GameCube selling for 20 bucks. Shh, I have the platinum one. <sighs> Screw that. What game do you buy in that console? I mean... Uh, Rogue, Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron, the Star I mean, Wars Resident game? Evil Four, uh, Metroid Prime, um, Metroid Prime Star Trilogy, Fox, Star, um, the NBA Two K Two, Star Wars, it? Star Wars, that's all I think it was. Adventures, I don't. No, Adventures was the. 
Assault is the DS one, I think. There is a second one on yeah, the GameCube, Yeah, it was on the GameCube, though. which was very cool to play. It was the next follow-up from yeah. the Nintendo 64. It was the better one on the GameCube. No, yeah. the first one on the GameCube was after 64 was Adventures. Okay. It had the dinosaurs, and that was weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the second one, they tried to go more traditional. And it was awesome. Yeah. I had fun playing that. So, I don't know. I just thought it was weird for a Nintendo fanboy. 20 bucks? Yeah, that's good. I mean, the Wii plays GameCube games. If you have a Wii... Those are probably going to be 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, and then our iOS uh, wrap-up, we go to uh, Brooklyn. Then I actually want him to help me out. You actually yeah. watch the trailer about this new announcement, so take it, take it away. I loved Flappy Bird. I loved it that I hate it, and I hated that I loved Flappy Bird. So did the owner. Um, <laughs> Flappy Bird was so effing addictive, and you just could spend like 40... 40 hours just like getting a score of 20 you know like it was so difficult you got up to 20 <laughs> 20 and then some of my friends had like 101 and a whole bunch of bs uh so his name is dong win uh the creator of flappy bird so he pulled flappy bird because he said it was too addictive that's crazy first of all it was making like fifty thousand dollars a day and it was it was still making fifty thousand dollars a day when he pulled it, so it's not like he was altruistic and like was like, "Hey, I'm pulling this game down." Well, he was I'm still tall. getting a, he's yeah. still getting a paycheck from people playing. Yeah. So now he's back in the news because he's releasing uh, a new game called um, uh, Swing Copters. Copters. Yeah. It's it's a similar mechanic to Flappy Bird. You just fly up, like you fly vertical instead of going horizontal. Uh, I saw the trailer. It looks amazing. I will get it. Yeah. I will pay a dollar ninety nine if it comes out for a dollar ninety nine. Ninety nine cents to play the un uh, no advertisement. Perfect. And it, exactly. So it's the typical let's sell by volumes yeah. just to get my game popular. And then I guarantee you in a couple of weeks we'll see the one ninety nine price tag on it, free to play with advertisements, which we all know it can get very annoying on platform. It can get, and, and to a point that it's bothersome to play it with it um pretty cool i i mean the coverage that this guy has got when he pulled the game and the coverage that he, he's getting now when he's bringing the game back i've actually read that article from time uh website so pretty interesting uh again ios it, it really is becoming uh another platform a, a serious market or a serious platform for games uh to go out there it's not just uh you know, the, the computer anymore. It's really... It's not just a personal assistant, right. a personal tool. It's now also a, your video game console. Right. That's I mean, interesting point. You I give remember, your last gen to your child. That's you right. Know, <laughs> you get the new Let one. Let them play uh, Pokemon trading card games. I remember the fervor over the Flappy Bird when it was pulled. Like, people were selling their iPhones with Flappy Bird on it. Yeah. On eBay for enormous amounts. Did anybody ever buy it? Like, you know, people put it, it up was for bought, sale. It was bought, but then they... Uh, the, eBay didn't allow the the, uh, the transaction to go through. Oh, now eBay has a conscience. I saw somebody buy an air guitar off eBay. There's a new story where somebody sold an air guitar, and sure enough, true to form, they mailed them an empty guitar case. Uh, <laughs> and like, hey, hey that's a guitar case, though. Well, I mean, we're talking about eBay, the you know, the, the, the website was sold you laugh, toast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the Jesus toast, Jesus cheese, Jesus whatever, you know, grilled cheeses. Yeah, yeah. And so, why not? Uh, but yeah, they, they actually did have a conscience and they didn't let the transaction go through. This was a transaction of like thousands of dollars. Yeah. For uh, for like um, um, $10,000. It might be the, 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 the ballpark figure for this thing. Quick eBay story. Uh, before uh, like torrents and stuff, like when eBay first came out, they were selling, somebody was selling like Teen Titans and it wasn't available on DVD. But they were actually selling a pen. And when you bought the pen, you got a free copy of Teen Titans. And I bought that pen for $20. And they sent me the entire series of Teen Titans on DVD. Never gave me that pen. Worst eBay seller ever. <laughs> and that's like, that's, a, that's the type of shenanigans that go on, on eBay. Like, as far as they're conscious, like, well, we never sold something we didn't the rights to. I just sold a pen. And now I'm thinking I'm a backup. Wow. <laughs> so that's why I'm just so shocked that eBay actually took the time to 
put a stop to these I said bad. I think it's because of the news coverage that they got. No one ever talked about Teen Titans DVD yeah. being sold. Nobody ever did. I once like, bought okay. a DVD that turned out to be a bootleg, and it it skipped at the end, <gasps> and, and it never finished. And I what was I it? sent the email to the seller, and I was like, "This this DVD you sold me didn't it didn't finish the movie? It just cut off." And he's like, "Oh, don't worry, I'll send you a new copy." He sent me a disc only, so he basically burnt the movie again, <laughs> and it skipped in the exact same part. And I was like, "Fuck this! I didn't, I didn't bother him again after that." What movie was it? Did you get your refund? It was, no, I didn't get a refund. Dude, it was, it was five bucks. What movie it was, was a bootleg. It was just a private seller. He's not going to give me a refund. <laughs> it was Plague Dogs. It's an animated British film. All right, so when, I read the book. Yeah. I read the book, so I wanted yeah. to see the movie. There's nah. no way you could have gotten your hands on that movie any other way. Yeah. Well. That was a long time ago. I'm sure today you can get it on Amazon or something. Yeah, no. you know. well, uh, moving on to movies. Power Rangers reboot has an official release date. We're going to talk about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Nope. I, let's get nope. it. Moving on. No, no, no. Moving on to you. <laughs> I want to talk about it. Power Rangers is a thing. Um, it's, I mean, it's not really a point we haven't made already, but this is another... Um, Step in the right another, direction. Yeah, another step in the right direction. Just more, more proof, more examples that they're putting money into this, and they're they're they're, they're, they're uh, they have faith in it. And, and the reason we're saying this is because the release date chosen is June 2016, a summer release for Power Rangers, which is amazing. All right. And I mean, and this is a a week after. Warner Brothers announces that Batman vs Superman is not going to be in the summer, but in March. Of that same year? They were so. scared of uh, the Power Rangers. <laughs> they heard rumors they of the Power Rangers, Rangers movie moving, and they're like, right. shit, we gotta get out of here. Super, <laughs> power, super power teenagers? Ah, oh, that's gonna conflict with our movie. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I'm super excited. I mean, every, every every little bit of news coming out about this gets me more and more excited. It's awesome. I, I, I think we're not too far away from casting rumors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm surprised that we haven't started hearing them. Serious ones. I mean, they were, we, we keep hearing about the uh, the old cast being, you know, maybe the few selective uh, individuals going being targeted for the movie. I'm crossing my fingers for Amy Joe. Um, <laughs> Ner- Nerdy XP does not comment on rumors and speculation. True, but uh, rumors. I did see. Um, I'm going to put her name. <laughs> I know Chloe, what you say. Chloe Minez as the Pink Ranger. Chloe Grace Moretz. Right. <laughs> yeah, so but then that I was, don't like her. It, it, so didn't I, have, I don't, it was reported yeah. on some, it, you know, like Thailand <laughs> RPG 100. What about the Latino review? They constantly well, the the in the world. Exactly, but they're they're a legit source now for rumors. Yeah. But then the Thailand 64 RPG dot <laughs> whatever website. <laughs> was, That's I, all they have, man. <laughs> like, that was a great thing. You did a search for it, and that what it was a bunch of websites citing that one source. Yeah. It's like you know, at one point, I remember when I finally learned, how, or when I first started exploring to Wikipedia. Uh, there was a big music tournament, or there was a there is there was a big music festival uh, happening. Uh, in Tennessee, it's Bonnaroo, and one of the big mysteries about Bonnaroo Music Festival every year is what will be the lineup. And usually, they make a big fuss about it. They make some big announcement about it, and you know, they wait until the last minute. They the way they always reveal it is kind of uh, uh, they make people wait. Like they only release two at a time. Or, you know, on the seventh minute of every hour, we'll release a few. That year, in particular, something they were doing simultaneously. There were people editing Wikipedia uh, with the announcements. So every hour, somebody went in there and added the new announcements. Well, something that you know that we did, me and my buddy, we we had this idea for a name of a band that we always wanted to form. Puzzles it was called El Defecto. And when this whole craze, we were following the the uh, the news about the, the festival and the, the new announcements. And something that we did, or I did. I went into Wikipedia for Bonnaroo for that year and added our band to the channel. <laughs> Funny enough, it stayed for a whole hour and people on like other websites started saying like, who is this band? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. So I still have the article uh, or some, a board of people like commenting on the official website like, who is this band? No one's heard of it. <laughs> Unfortunately, awesome. within that one hour, I didn't have enough time to really put like a fake profile of a band. Uh, 
But ever since then, I actually tried to redo it or that same thing, do it the year following, but it didn't let me. You you know, especially when it's big festivals like this, I guess they sign something with Wikipedia that they control until the whole thing is announced and you know, then they control the release of stuff. So there's my Wikipedia story. Nice. Sony is <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's great. <laughs> Uh, Sony is deciding to control the release of The Interview. Uh, this yeah. is a movie with uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen where they play a reporter and producer who become spies um, tasked with killing... Kim Jong-un. Kim Thank Jong-un. you. And basically, uh, Korea freaked out and said, what are you doing? I can't believe you're making this. I didn't, we, You are not going to show... Our leader get killed for your American movie. If you do this, we will go to war. And at first, something was like, ah, freedom of speech. We can do whatever we want. It's for you. Well, I think they backed down a little bit since then <laughs> and said, you know what? Just in case they're not joking, it's not worth people dying over. That is insane. I, I you know, as much as I, I definitely don't want to see people get hurt. I kind of wanted to see this one play out. Yeah. Uh, just to see how I mean, it's a movie. It's 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 it, like exactly what it is: freedom of expression. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 crazy to me that Sony it is changing the movie just to a piece for something that was, uh, I guess, what was a threat for war. I mean, Sony's not an American company. No, they're a Japanese, but Sony Entertainment is American. They're based out of here. Very near. North Korea. Korea. So, uh, I, mean, there, I, mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of politics. I mean, freedom of speech is a thing in America, but, I mean, these movies get released to the world, so then, it, you know, I don't know. It becomes yeah, very it's a Seth Rogen movie. This is the ones that make no money, you know, overseas, <laughs> and they make tons of money domestically. The rumor is that they're not removing the death. They're just whoa, making whoa, it man. less intense. You gotta, you gotta put a spoiler alert up. It's a rumor. We don't talk about rumors. <laughs> I would like to see the unedited version when it comes out. Yeah, I really day. hope if if they do change it, they they have an original cut or something. Does it? Do you guys lose interest in this movie? I thought that the trailer was pretty funny. It was a it was funny and it was a radical idea. No, the I fact don't. that they were pulling through. Does this pull interest away from you? Not at all. No, I I still go see it. It's anyway. not. I mean, okay. Oh, it's so, not, yeah, okay. This team, I'll see anything they do. So. After they're Pineapple super funny. Express, Pineapple Express anything. this is the I end. Agree. They're both no, both amazing. This is the end. Was downhill. But Shut up. I agree. <laughs> did you watch Neighbors? This is. Uh, I did see Neighbors, but <laughs> there was no James Franco. No. <laughs> Fair enough. The um, uh, this is a, a very similar to um, Comedy Central's thing with South Park a few years ago, when they had Muhammad on, and they made them censor it when they aired it on TV and. Never aired it again, and you couldn't even see it on Netflix. I don't know if it was released on the DVD or not, but they made a big deal out of that because they didn't want to upset <clears throat> upset any Muslims. I, that's not. That's, I guess that's good that movies are conscious, but uh, I kind of wanted to see this one get made with you know to see how far we could push the buttons of other leaders. <laughs> I mean, like I'm such one because, like, on one hand. Obviously, nobody should kill anybody over a movie. Right. True. But then, nobody should also make a movie like this where somebody could get killed over. Yeah. So it ends up being like, well, really, who's, you know, more... Yeah, what I mean, like, I don't know. Look at movies, American-made movies, like uh, W. Uh, the movie that uh, Oliver Stone made? Was yeah. Oliver yeah. Stone? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. George Bush. That was, that was a whole satire on George Bush. Yeah, but no well, one cares about George Bush. This was like four years it's, from it's, him being removed or be, being, you know, like being the president. There was, you know, no one really made any pause about this. So it's a movie. It's, it's about a leader. I agree. But what's going on there? Welcome to Politics XP. <laughs> George Bush was hated by the media. And it was cool and popular and funny to make fun of him. You will never see a W movie about Barack Obama. If they, if, but if you watch W, I don't know if anyone here has seen it. No, it, it doesn't really make fun of him as as you know most people wanted it to. Okay, like it's it's very sympathetic. Okay, to him. 
I didn't see it. I was basing it off you. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. Okay. But it was, I mean, it was, it was a high profile a director and high yeah. profile actors. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, very it was a, a biopic. It was just a biopic. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, what was that Sarah Palin HBO Game Change? Yeah. That yeah. I have not seen. That <laughs> made fun of Sarah Palin and made yeah. her look like a crazy person. <laughs> but it's popular to make fun of Sarah Palin and make her look like a crazy person. Like, I don't think you'll see a biopic making JFK look yeah, like a Yeah, but we're talking Kim Jong Un. I know. He's, he's, he's not like the, uh, the one that no one makes fun of. So. Hope he doesn't listen to Nerdy XP. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Who knows how far we get, man? Chances we're, are, we're, or we're a little seat in the wind. In Korea. <laughs> I can tell you, none, Prisoners. Of, none of his citizens are listening to us. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, Marvel released some new Ant Man news. Sure. Uh, so, so I guess the, the big news it came out today, um, earlier in the week, Monday. Um, the director, uh, Peyton Reed. Director, Peyton Paul, Reed. Peyton Reed. Um, and you know, made his Twitter usually Twitter media that the beginning of the film they started shooting the film. Day after today, a, a picture gets released on the USA Today of uh, the first pictures of Paul Rudd uh, playing. Chris, help me out with the character's name. I would have known if you asked me. Scott Lang. Scott Lang. Uh, a plain picture. I mean, it's Paul Rudd wearing a hoodie with stitches on his face. Uh, with the San Francisco Bridge behind him. Golden Gate. Go- do you think we'll see? Do you think, yeah, thank you. Do you think we'll see it get destroyed? I've never seen the Golden Gate Bridge get destroyed in a movie. <laughs> like, that would be crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's pretty cool. I mean, cool. but again, it's like you know a, a big statement about this movie. Um, this movie is getting released next year. I mean, no matter what, no matter what, it's next year. They're shooting this film. Um, they, I, I guess, I go along with the news is more casting uh, being revealed uh, for the movie. I imagine they're already being casted since they're already shooting, um, but they are not revealing that uh, we're gonna start seeing some familiar Marvel Cinematic Universe faces uh, involved with this project, including uh, spoilers. Just in case for some sensitive, and you stayed away from it. That's right. Stay away Sorry, from I'm insensitive, but I'm insensitive on your guys' behalf. I appreciate it. So a possible, well, it's not a possible. Uh, Howard Stark, uh, the guy who plays uh, the John Slattery, with that guy, <laughs> Tony, like young Howard Stark, young Howard Stark from Iron Man three. But he uh, wasn't. That's not Captain America. America. Ain't Captain. Well, he was in Iron that's Man. That's Stanley Cooper. Right? He wasn't in Iron Man three or two. Was that the same guy? He was in old. two. John okay. Slattery was in the second one. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. So. <laughs> So is it Dominic Cooper character. or is it Dominic John Slattery? It's a guy Dominic that was Cooper. in. in, in is it the old guy or the, the young, young guy? guy? The younger guy. Okay, that so looks it's like okay. Walt Disney. Okay. No, Dominic Cooper. John Slattery was confirmed. John Slattery is the older guy. God. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in Iron Man Two, right? The, the Disney like video. Older star. Disney like video. John Slattery. Okay, that's yeah, the only one. <laughs> All right, so the that's one. Man. The one who told him how to build the elements from the map. Yeah. Dominic, yeah. Dominic yeah. Cooper's in Captain America. Okay, not the guy. Exact. Okay, All right. that was the same not guy. That guy. No, no, <laughs> the same guy. Oh, no, he was much younger. Okay. okay. Well, fair enough. And Dominic Cooper announced. does look like Disney. Spoilers: yes. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> That's not Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god. <laughs> so fair enough. So so he so older Howard Stark is in it. Yes. All right, there you go. So, John Slattery. I guess that's the first reveal of how this thing is going to tie into the, the cinematic universe. So, that's it. I, you know, more other characters got, or other more actors got announced. Judy Greer is the only one I remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I can't remember any. Uh, Judy Greer from Judy Greer. Arrested Development? Yes. No. Yes, uh-huh. I remember they, them doing a nod to that. I don't recognize half these names, I'd butcher them. Bobby Cannavale. Michael Pena, A.B. Ryder Forsen, Pena, that's Michael Pena, David, <laughs> David Das from Malchian. Who's Michael Pena? You Who? kidding me? Michael Pena is amazing. Okay, he, he so. was uh, uh, the one of the two cops in that was that with Jake Gyllenhaal. What was that movie? Zodiac. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's like a documentary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a documentary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what was that? It was just like last okay. year it came out. Gangster Squad? He's in Crash. Yeah, End of Watch? Yeah. End of Watch. End of Watch. I haven't seen any movies with this guy. He's an amazing actor. 
Underrated. He need, he needs a big breakout role. Well, and this this will be it. it. Let's hope. So here's the safest bet I've ever made in my life. Avengers 2 comes out May. This movie comes out July. Ant-Man's the singer for Avengers 2. Okay. Like, that will be the Easter egg and credits. That Stinger, you think hey, they're not? Do you think they're not going to tease uh, Thanos? What? No. No, <laughs> no I, think, I, I think this will be the singer. Like Guardians you know, of the Galaxy 2. Guardians uh, of the Galaxy 2 will be your, your Thanos tease. I don't know. I mean, or maybe Thor 3. But, I mean, it could go for 2. They could do a mid and a... Post credit goes. How would a duck make? Usually, if they do two, one is just a humorous thing, yeah. and the other is future. How yeah. Howard the Stark shows up? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Howard. Howard. Okay. fair enough. Did um, you just come up with that? Yeah, yeah Howard. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. <laughs> this week's topic of the week is what is the easiest game and then hardest game that you played. This is going to be for us something memorable. So if you're listening, you're shouting at us. Why didn't anybody pick Battletoads or something like that? <laughs> you know, maybe we didn't play Battletoads when we were younger. We don't remember it. Yeah. Uh, so easiest first. Uh, for me, Walking Dead, uh, specifically season one. This is a Telltale game. Okay. It is very cinematic. You basically move your guy around and then do conversational choices. It's a good game. It, it's a great game. It's emotional. Fifth episode, packs a punch. Um, it's only ten hours. Um, you know, it's just a standard game like this point, maybe less. But pretty much it's just conversational trees. It is a interactive choose your own adventure movie. There's a couple fail sequences, but when you fail them you get right back into it and you just have to do a couple button pushes. Nothing complicated. So definitely easiest game I've played in quite some time. Okay. Easiest game I played is a little difficult. Uh, and I was explaining this to them the others earlier. The um, some of the easier games I play, like Kirby or Donkey Kong or something, you, I play. I, I play and I try to get all the secrets and get, get the one hundred percent mark. So it makes them a little more challenging. But one I can think of that's pretty pretty uh, straightforward. You just go through. There's no extra side stories or anything. Is Final Fantasy Mystic Quest for the uh, Super Nintendo. Yeah. It's uh, it was a Final Fantasy game made by. Square USA, so it had nothing to do with Japan, and um, it was like labeled as Final Fantasy for beginners. So basically, you just throw it in, you go on a map, like you can't walk around. You just go from one city to the other, kind of like a you know Mario, Mario esque, one level to the next, and um, you know you you only have one party member at a time. So you get them, you lose them, you get another one, you lose them, and uh, that I mean. I never played it, but when you say Final Fantasy for beginners, I think Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles or something along those lines. Yeah. Chocobo's Quest on the Quest. Like, it was it kind of in that similar vein? No, I mean, it's not, not considered a spin off, really, because, I mean, it's an RPG, and you, you know, you have um, time based battles, and you do one character at a time, and stuff like that, but. So, it's just, it's just a, a weird Final Fantasy game. Uh, in, in Japan, it was released. That's Final Fantasy USA. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Final well, that's Fantasy Games. Of us, you know. Would you recommend it to somebody if it was on the virtual yeah, console? I mean, it, it is. Well, it is for the Wii, not the Wii U. Um, and if if you're a Final Fantasy fan, definitely, you know, just to, to say you played it, and it's not it's not not fun. I'm like I enjoy it. I've, I've beaten it more than once. I hope they put it's, that in the really box. Easy. It's, it's not, not, not fun. fun. <laughs> <laughs> they should. Nerdy XP. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Is that the Japanese English thing? You <laughs> <laughs> it's no no fun. Final Fantasy USA. No no fun. <laughs> uh, now, one of the easiest games like I remember playing was. Yeah, it was a Mario game, and I know this is going to sound silly, but, like, Mario Kart was, like, one of my first real, like, competitive games that I played with Alan, and we loved playing, like, Double Dash. Like, any like any of those games were really fun to me because it was just to pick up and play. So that was fun and easy. Uh, so that that's my easy that's my easiest game is Mario Kart. Like, that's just one that I played with Alan all the time, and we loved it, and I, I used to... It used to make it not fun, but it was it was easy. Like that was the easiest game. Brothers, I, you say like silly. 
it was almost my choice. Like I was thinking about it, I was like, well, games are kind of easy that you can kind of just sit down, and play, win pretty much most of the time. Mm-hmm. And, and obviously, competitive, you know, there, there's that extra. But if you're playing a computer, you're gonna beat the computer in Mario Kart most of the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially in the earlier Mario Kart yeah. games. Yeah, like I remember Mario Kart 64 was one of my favorites with that one. And we would, like, wear out the, the little stick in the middle. I did think of it, too, but didn't want to because they have gotten more challenging. And, and the yeah, I mean, you can download ghosts. Like, but... when you're doing time, tri- time trials, you can now download people from, like, Germany that, like, are super good at the fire hopping and whatever well, bullshit. They drive faster over there. <laughs> so. Yeah, so, so that's <laughs> the most memorable and easy was Mario Kart. Brooklyn? Uh, all right, so for me, it goes back to when I was three years old. So here, just like everything, you're not gonna get an easy answer out of me. It's a story here. <laughs> I beat this kid, Bobby Fisher, at chess. <laughs> that game right. was so easy. I never bothered touching it again. Close, but not right. Um, so three years old, my first experience with a PC or a computer video game, Prince of Persia, for the DOS system. Uh, this was the skits that you had to load and wait. You were three years old? I was three years old at the first time that I actually got to play in one of these. Yeah. It was somebody, a friend of my dad's, also a doctor who had the who had a uh, computer, went over to his uh, doctor's office computer <laughs> and got to play this thing while they were having a conversation or whatever. You know, they, they, we just went to the room and uh, started playing with the, 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 the thing. So they loaded the game. And he, you know, like a couple minutes into it, I didn't know this is a three year old playing a computer game on something that he's never used a computer. Uh, so, what made sense to me was just to smash buttons. <laughs> Before I knew it, apparently I activated some kind of god mode cheat that makes you skip to the end level and see the end credits of this thing. What? So, at that same time, so I, you know, I'm like super happy, I don't know what's going on. The uh, owner of the game comes by and he's like, "What the heck? You just beat the game? You just broke my computer? Smash <laughs> <laughs> in the keyboard? Where's my DOS key?" Uh, so yeah, so that was my easiest computer, uh, easiest video game that I ever beat. I don't know how I beat it. I actually went online uh, prior to this conversation to try to see if I could revive this cheat or what the heck I did when I was three years old. Uh, but yeah, that's my memory of the easiest game. Not because I played it, but just because I beat it somehow. Um, at three years old, beat Prince of Persia for the computer game. So, uh, that's the story. Picking back up what you said, uh, we, I never played the game, but like another really easy game, uh, Prince of Persia, again, uh, the, the remake in 2008, which came out for PC, PS3, and mm-hmm. uh, Xbox 360, you can't die. Like, there's a narrator telling a story, and if you fall in a pit, she'll say something like, that's not what happened, and then your character will just go back oh, to the platform oh, where no. you just fell from. So, like, it, it is all about the adventure and the storytelling. Okay. And kind of more like annoying that. than Navi. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what happened? In the, in that's the not what happened? That's not what happened. <laughs> you die a lot, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was definitely another easy game. Uh, any other... Candidates or things you guys thought of for for easy games? Battle Toads is pretty easy. <laughs> it's like I got some fucking over here. Sucks. <laughs> so, uh, nothing else that. Uh, all right, so I mean, uh, another game that I thought it was easy uh, to the point that it was you know Mario games are not known for being a hard thing unless you really do the um, you know let's get everything in every level. Have you ever been the Super Mario tubular and... Yes. Yes. <laughs> I actually never have. It's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. Have you? Super Mario Brothers. The first one? The original yeah. Super Nintendo. Yeah. Or, yeah. Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. True? I don't think I have, to be honest. Yeah. 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 You, you, actually... get, you get Peach. Peach is at the end. That's she's, it. In, she's in the castle, finally? Yes. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> that's really it. Uh, that's, that's the whole story. Yeah. And they just go walk together, and that's it. I didn't beat it until it was on the Super Nintendo All Star though. Uh, so I did not beat it on the uh, on the Nintendo system. Yeah. But I did beat it on Super Nintendo with one yeah, of my first was Super Mario Bros. Two, the American one. USA. USA. <laughs> my first <laughs> Super Mario USA. No, no, sorry. No, Mario was <laughs> Super Mario Three. Three. Toki yeah. Toki Panic. Super Mario Three was my first Mario game. So, so where are you guys' hard games? 
I'll start and we'll, we'll do it the other way around. So hard games and something that I, I, I still think it's a hard game and I never really had the discipline. I hope I beat it. <laughs> yeah. uh, discipline to go back to play it. Banjo Kazooie, no, no. Nintendo 64. Oh my god, Banjo Kazooie was really fucking hard because you had to collect our, those little the puzzles, pieces. The and... jigsaw puzzles. Oh so, god. And, and the crazy thing is, just like, you know, I guess Mario 64 kind of have that, that you got to have so many jigsaw puzzles in order to move on to the next level, to unlock the next it's level. such bad memories. Because <laughs> I hated that game. I am game. so glad that's somebody like. Oh, man. So, you know, this this game, when I moved from Colombia to, to, to the U.S., this was one game that I had started and had almost like 90% beat uh, when I came over. And unfortunately, I guess Nintendo 64 is the memory was stored in the console and not the game, little did I know. <laughs> Uh, so I didn't have the progress, and I came to uh, stay with uh, my cousin here, Ed here, Hi. and then uh, <laughs> they didn't have like half the, like, he had like I two hated levels. I game. <laughs> they didn't so get stupid. it, so I'm like, I got frustrated <laughs> at that point. I think at some point I did get pretty far into it. I remember beating, this is one of these games that you, you, you beat the boss once, but you didn't really beat the boss until <laughs> you actually got everything. Uh, so this was one of those frustrating games. To date, this is the game that I have not been able to beat. Maybe because I just haven't had the discipline, but I just remember that game being so hard. Uh, so there it is. Yeah, I never. I um, I played the game. I just checked it out from Blockbuster, so I didn't get a chance to even try. Really, I liked it, but never owned it. Okay, I never liked it. Like I started playing it, I'm like, this is a dumb Super Mario Bros. game. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm like, I'm not gonna play this. But it has a huge fan following, and people say it's a great game. Banjo Tooie, Banjo Tooie, Banjo Tooie was the. Yeah. I never, never played Banjo Tooie. Um, I got to play, but again, another frustrating game that you need to invest a lot of time into. Um, great game, nonetheless. I mean, for me, that was a great. You spiked my interest because now I want to go play it. Go play it. But apparently, and really, you it. can't. Is it on the Microsoft Store or something? Yeah. It, it was, was a, rare. It was a Nintendo game. It was. It's it was rare, rare, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's rare. rare. Yeah. So I know. It's so something on the eShop. I mean, Donkey Kong Country. Yeah, is not on the eShop. Donkey Kong Country is, but but, but that was. A rare I don't game. think Banjo Kazooie is. I'm pretty certain. Oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. They they couldn't get the license for it. I don't know. My hardest game was Pokemon, the original one. What? Because Red? collecting uh, all right. fifty Pokemon were, it was extremely difficult. You had to like get. Like, six, God, God, like God. yeah, you had to get three versions of Eevee to get his things. You had to like, you had to like get all this money to get Porygon or Polygon, whatever the hell his name was from the arcade. Don't and then, like you don't know the name. And then and, like, oh and then you, and then you had to catch the 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 the, the, the Taurus and train into a freaking. Well, no, I mean. The toughest oh. part was you had to go to, to Safari Zone and you had to purchase Safari balls and you had to catch Taurus, who was my last one that I caught. I thought it was Kangas nice. No, man, it was Taurus. Yeah, but I thought those, those were the last two, maybe. And then, you have to, and then you have to trade Pokemon to get all, like, Charmander, Squirtle, and Ivysaur, whatever, Bulbasaur, Bulbasaur whatever. Like, you have, to, you have to collect all of those. you have family who just love restarting the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's so how I did it. That's how I did it, too. Yeah, and then, like, you have to you have to collect, like, there was a blue version of this Pokemon, a red per- Like, that was so hard. For me... I had to, a friend lent me their Game Boy, because I had a link cable, and I spent one night... Link cables. I spent one night going back and forth, and I started that game like seven times, <gasps> and I, at the next day, I gave him back his Game Boy in, in game, and we each had all three starters, and we traded back and forth like the three different versions of Eevee and whatever, so that way they were in the Pokédex, and like the four that you had to trade for, and like did all those shenanigans, so that way it would be in a situation where... We could run through the game and then have credit for all buck fifty. That's ridiculous. Wow. So beating that game was not hard, but beating the entire game yeah. as far as collecting the one fifty. That was a challenge. Did you get one fifty? Yes, yes. I got one fifty. I got one fifty. I never got to get one to one fifty. No. Never I didn't. made it. I got close. I didn't even beat the game. Uh, oh, I, I beat the game. I got to the Vermilion Island or whatever it was. Vermilion uh, City, Drew. Vermilion City. What, what was the, you uh, correct the me on everything Cinnabar. else. I'm going to correct you on all no, of this Pokemon that's fine. shit. I, I was never that big in the Cinnabar. Cinnabar. Cinnabar Island? Cinnabar. Cinnabar. Where, where Giovanni is. Where's Giovanni? 
No, 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 you were so close. Lost seven interest. Seven gems. Seven to me. Yeah. You sold this Charizard, man. <laughs> <laughs> For eighty-five dollars. I, I spent. I remember this. I, I spent a hundred hours collecting all hundred and fifty Pokemon with help from Alan. <laughs> Alan, and Alan. Why was this? You know, something that was very frustrating, especially when you had people playing your video game. They went and started their video game. New game. Oh my god, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I don't want to talk about this because I'm going to cry. Every yeah. single one of us. I remember I did it to Alan's game, oh. uh, but he wasn't that far into it, but he still lost it. Somebody did it to me, and I was so, so, so. Dude, I, cr- uh, I, I cried. Like, I <laughs> cried because I had all 150 Pokemon. I had them all. Nope, you have one Bulbasaur. <laughs> <laughs> I had them all, and oh, I caught them all. This never happened to me with Pokemon, but with other games, yeah, and that's frustrating. I cried so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's a gimmick. It's a sell. Because, like, I mean, even now you only can have one save copy. And, you know, technologically you can have more than one save copy on those discs. Uh-huh. But, uh, cartridges. But then you would have more than one save copy. And you could, like, start <laughs> jury rigging and, like, copying yeah. and cloning and, like, shenanigans. Fair enough. That was my hardest game. It, it man, Pokemon, memories. great memories. I really want them to come out with, like, just a Pokemon reboot. And they'll never do this. Where yeah, like all six fifty still exist, but all you have to do is buy two. Like if you if you own whatever the next two versions are, table and chair, you can catch all seven hundred and eighty. Uh-huh. But like like now, if you wanted to catch every one, you have to have like special events and mystery events, and you have to have this Pokemon Ranger game, and then move that from your DS to your three DS to the latest oh, copy yuck. and like mystery box, and like there's no easy wow. way to get every single Pokemon. How do they trade now? Is it wirelessly? Or yeah, it's Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah, there's no link cable. That was that was that was another <laughs> Nintendo article, man. That was good stuff. Uh, you weren't here when we talked about it, but we were talking about the Pokemon tournament where you went up I against the to, against the I gym trainer freaking and you got your ass kicked. Yeah. Freaking jinx. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. jinx killed every single one. <laughs> Lovely kids. I mean, I told you know, I'm so proud. I'm like, Jinx, all right, great. I got my Electabuzz. Yeah. I'm freaking him first. Electabuzz goes out there. Lovely kiss. Done. Sleep. Sleep. Just watch them die. Like, all right, here comes Charizard. Maybe, you know, it's an ice Pokemon. Yeah, type 1 fire, type 2 flying, man. Yes, but he's type 2 flying, and yes. the other was psychic. Oh! What do they do? Psych wave. <laughs> Boom, there goes the flying Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, that was the weakness. Flying, flying weakness psychic. psychic. Yeah, it was. No way. Yeah. No. Or maybe it was the other way around. Because I, I remember know. when you pl- when you played against uh, Gengar, you always. Well, the Gengar was type uh, one ghost, type two poison, and poison's weak to psychic. Oh, I don't know. Gosh, <laughs> but um, sorry, Tyler, that we're letting you down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Must be this is my Pokédex. Yes. Uh, this would be a good one for my roommate Ross. He's obsessed <laughs> with Pokemon. He he he. He's the kind of person who talks to you as if you know what he's talking about, too. So he'll, like, tell, show me pictures and be like, oh, this types of Pokemon, this is a weakness. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's obsessed. I, I'm a purist. I, I don't like anything. I, I don't like any of the new games. I like my green. That's where you stopped. No green, meal. red, and yellow. 150. Can't give you in America. Yeah. doesn't count. I don't, li- I don't like <laughs> anything beyond the original 150. Like, even what Togepi was pushing it. <laughs> Togepi. <laughs> yeah. 151, I don't know. What's your uh, hardest game, Drew? I'm not going to strike a conversation like this. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of upsets me. But um, uh, I, I had two in mind. I had a tie for my hardest games. And um, the first is Metroid. The original NES Metroid, which was ridiculous. And I, I, I stayed up later than I should um, as an adult. Like, <laughs> you go to work the next morning, but I got to beat Metroid. And I'd be up until like two in the morning trying to beat this game, and I don't know how many times I died at, at Mother Brain. And this is the kind where when when you go in, um, like the Super Nintendo version, there's little things you have to beat before you get to the Mother Brain. The Super Nintendo version remembers when you beat it. Like if you leave and come back, it's not there. But the NES game, you have to you have to beat these every single time. And uh. oh god, and, and it was <laughs> terrible. And there's there's things flying at you from from up and down and 
you have to dodge them while trying to shoot Mother Brain with your missiles, and if you run out of missiles, you have to leave, reload, come back. But you can roll. You can roll. No, I mean, there's lava between you and Mother Brain, so you can't just, like, go over to her. And if you try to stand right in front of her, you just get barraged with whatever those flying things are, and... God, it was it was so Netflix. hard, but I beat it. So I this was for the Super <laughs> Nintendo? No, the Nintendo one. Metroid. Right. So Super Nintendo one is a great game. Okay. And maybe even better. It's more, it's more fun. Uh, there's a lot more to it. Obviously, Super Nintendo versus NES. Sure. But, yes, yes, fun. But, yeah, <laughs> it is is fun. <laughs> so we are covering all <laughs> Nintendo so far. So yeah, Pay attention to that. The, uh, the um, my tie game is, is not a Nintendo game, but it's oh. a very similar... Finale that was really difficult, and I think the difficulty with this is just the it's very early game. I think it was originally released on the Wonder Swan Color, but the what? I, I could be wrong about that. But it's it's like I played on the Wii Virtual Console. It's called Ease One and Two. The um, Y's. Yeah, it's spelled with a Y. <laughs> like I, I grew up, we we had Ease Three for the Super Nintendo, and that's a really simple game. It's pretty easy, and I always grew up calling it Yiz. Like I would say Yiz 3 but um, I, I read online eventually it was pronounced Ease and Ease books 1 and 2 would I've heard it both together <laughs> <laughs> together on the on the Wii Virtual Console I played it and the difficulty is just how simple it is it's so old like your sprite you run into a monster you just physically run into it and like <laughs> You keep hitting it and bouncing it off, bouncing off of it until it dies, and then you just run straight through it and it disappears. And so that's how you fight all the bosses by by doing that. And um, the uh, the final boss is similar to Mother Brain and Metroid, where you have to strategically try and hit the uh, the boss while all these things are flying at you. And both 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 of these games, when I beat them, I got so excited that I took a picture of the screen. <laughs> and I sent it to my friends that I was talking about the game. Like, look, I beat this game. And this, How did you take a this picture is of in my twenties. You know? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, with my phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is me in my twenties. So, with took my a cell picture, phone, waited a picture. week to develop it. Yeah. And then I got to share it. <laughs> he did a uh, chalk sketching of it, <laughs> rubbing. So yeah, those Ease books one and two, and Metroid, the original Metroid, super hard, very fun, very great games. Awesome. Uh, the most recent hard game that I played that kind of stuck with me is XCOM Enemy Unknown. Oh my god, why didn't I say that one? <laughs> that one is super difficult. I've never even heard of oh, this. Oh man. So, in this game, you control uh, four soldiers to start off with. You can open your squad up to six. And it's a tactical game where you can move so far on the map, or you can move a little bit further, but then you can't take an action. What console? Uh, this came out uh, originally for PC, and then went to PS3 and Xbox 360. Okay. Uh, and it's so there's two aspects to it. You have the tactical battles where you are managing your soldiers and moving them around the map, and then afterwards you go into a base where you can control where you're going to put resources and buy stuff. And then aliens are constantly attacking you. And part of the game is unless you play like an easy, you're not going to save everybody. So you have to tactically decide which countries you're going to lose, and when you lose those countries, you lose their support. So they don't send you resources, you don't get boosts from getting those countries, you only have so much money, which I don't understand. The world is getting run over by aliens. Why are people holding money back? (laughs) But it's a good gameplay mechanic. You're not going to buy every upgrade, so you do have to be tactical. And then when you get to the the gameplay itself, maneuvering the soldiers around, um, especially if you play it on classic, like, Iron man mode I think is what they call it 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 doesn't allow you to do a soft save state so you can send four soldiers all those shoot an alien they all have like a 33% chance of hitting him all four will miss that sounds frustrating I mean it it does like a it does like a you know Dungeons and Dragons like 20 side die like calculation where it's like chances are you might miss so you might miss all your attacks so then you lose a squad member and you can buy new squad members, but you know when you're later in the game and you lose, you know your colonel rank four or something like that, and you get stuck with rookies for the next mission because you got squad wiped, you pretty much lost. Like that becomes an uphill battle really quickly. Uh, so there's just a lot of resource management and you know on and off the battlefield. I know Edgar played it, so I mean like 
What, what were your thoughts? And... I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> because, hate okay, so, game. no, I mean, they what, had... What did you play it on? PlayStation 3. And you played it in? PS3. Okay. So, there are easy missions. Like, you can choose around the world, easy, 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 easy. And then there's this difficult one that's, like, very lucrative because you get a whole bunch of money and stuff. And then you play that one, and then you get slaughtered, and then you lose all your people that I that I grew emotionally attached to. I had this one, <laughs> I had this one Spanish dude that I created. He was my sniper. He got eaten by a zombie. That he got <laughs> like, every, like, when Chris told me about this, it was a free game for PlayStation Plus, and... Every time I uh, I saw Chris afterwards, I'm like, this game is so hard. Like, I, like it was so hard. And Chris is right. This game is super difficult, <laughs> and I can't believe this came out. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot about it. I gave up on tactical games as, as a kid because I couldn't. I liked do anything. it at the beginning when it was easy. I liked it, but then they got it got ramped up like super fast, like super hard, super fast. And then I I, I gave up. I haven't tried again since. We so you didn't get to beat your game. XCOM? No, you, you, you did beat your game. I Pokemon. beat Pokemon, Pokemon. Yeah. I didn't beat my Banjo uh, Kazooie. You did beat Did you beat your Jizzy game, games. whatever? Did you ever beat this game? Sick. Yeah, I So he did beat it. Yeah. So he got at least that pleasure. So I'm the only failure that <laughs> beat that game. That's great. I know you can do it, though. I I probably, it. if I had the time. Maybe I can go buy me a $20 uh, GameCube. <laughs> Ask, ask Tyler to give you a discount. For Nintendo 64. <laughs> it, might, it might be on the Xbox, because I know what... What was that other one? Conker's Bad Fur Day ended up going on the Xbox. Did it? Yeah. I know that they're bringing him into the um, so. Little Big Planet ripoff. It's Park of Spark. Are they really? Yeah. He's a download... Uh, I, I, I played the very beginning of Conker's Bad Fur Day. That game's amazing. Uh, we will <laughs> disagree on that. <laughs> I played the very beginning of that game, and I'm like, this game is dumb. <laughs> Maybe I just can't get behind like. Well, I mean, I was like, it's far like jokes thirteen and... years old at the time, so, so it was great. But going back to Chris's point, XCOM enemies unknown was super difficult, and supposedly like they kind of dumbed that down. Like when I started playing the game, I would you know I checked some on my chatter, and like the original XCOM that came out years before that was just all hard, no easy ramp up. It just started punching you in the face and, and kept on. So, but those are the games that we think are easy and worth playing, or hard and worth playing. Uh, love to hear from you guys. Uh, you can email us at nerdexp at gmail dot com and let us know what games uh, were easy for you or challenging. If you want to reach us on Twitter, you can follow me at nerdexp. You can follow Edgar at edgar x eighty six. Yep. Guess what year he was born. <laughs> and then you can follow Drew at. <laughs> Say it for us, Drew. Very close, very close, Chris. <laughs> We're getting better. That is World of Square backwards. Well, that's enough of that. Thank you, Guillermo. Thank you, Edgar. You're welcome. Thank you, Drew. And thank you, listener. I hope this week's episode... Listeners. Listeners. <laughs> hey, one, one. <laughs> I hope this week's episode helped you with your nerd IQ. Level up, friends. game is so hard like like it was so hard